Hello, Jim Hodges here, Bo here. Bo is a Brittany Spaniel, came in for our residency training program. He's a little over a year old right now, still a puppy, still willing to learn, very much a very active hunting type dog. He has those instincts. He gets turned on by cats, goats, bugs, squirrels, everything. That's not a license to misbehave. We still want him to learn to listen and to obey us whenever the, the time is needed, okay? So how do we do that? We do that through obedience. I believe obedience, besides learning commands, is a wonderful way to control and manage behaviors and teach our dog we're the leader of the pack. Just that simple. That's the whole philosophy of my training over the years. That's really evolved over the last 20 years to feel like that we need to control and, and manage dogs the way they do themselves. That also incorporates touch. I tell people all the time, words and touch are the key to training. When he does what we want, we praise him, we pet him. We sometimes give him a treat or a toy. When he does something we don't like, it's words and touch, a consequence, a tap of the leash, grabbing a snap, tapping the shoulder, something along those lines. But we do those simultaneously. We try to do words and touch together as much as possible in the beginning. Then our words start to take meaning when he's not right there with us as we go on. So we're going to go through obedience. I want you to uh, listen to my tone of voice. Watch him. If he messes up, I'm going to provide a consequence. If not, I'm going to show the directions for the consequence. He's uh, looking at baby goats. We have uh, probably about three, four week baby goats of six to eight of them back there. He's watching right now. They really excite him. He hadn't seen them out from here in the mornings. But it doesn't matter. He's got to work. Are you ready? Boom, let's go. So the very first thing is our let's go command. He's walking with us beside us on the leash. He's not pulling. One of the things that uh, our owner needed is a dog that doesn't pull. If he started to get out in front of us, we would tap back there or tap to our side, okay? The tap is a consequence. When we tap the leash, we would tell him no and tap, and then we would repeat the command. In this case, let's go. My toe to voice. Good boy. Slow down. Good. See how he's watching you? Anytime our dog starts watching us while we're working, we want to try to do our, and even when we're not working, we want to do our best to try to teach them that that's a great thing. It enhances our bond. It has him looking at us for direction and love. Okay? So sit. Good boy. See how he's looking at me? Atta boy. Hand signal for the sit was just like this. If he did not sit, I would have tapped the leash straight up above his head and told him, no, sit, okay? And then I'd come right back and praise a little, okay? Sit means sit. He's got to hold this sit till we release him. Having said that, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, I don't believe in keeping a dog in a sit as a command for a long time. Uh, at the most, a minute. 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds is plenty. If I want my dog to chill, I would probably either give the PLACE command or I would break. Break is my release or break. Why? Because our dog can never ever pull us on a leash again. If he started to pull, we would tap back towards our side and tell him no. He learns that he's supposed to be in our presence, especially when we're working. Hand signal here is for sit. Once again, the let's go. If he's pulling out in front, it's to tap back. Typically, I like to tap back and towards my side. When I tap the leash, I'm not pulling. When I pull, I do the work for him. He can continue to be distracted by the goats or something along those lines, and we pull him along, and he says, okay, and he's still looking. When we tap, we make him use his brain and think about what we want. This is a way to get him to focus on us more going forward and to be paying attention for our next command or whatever the words that may come out of our mouth is, okay? So, well, down. Hand signal from the side is down. He's to lay down, and a boy, good boy. And no, no, down. I don't want him to smell the ground when he's down. Now, if I put him in a stay, he could smell the ground. If he was free, he could smell the ground. But when I tell him down, he's to lay down and wait for my next command. Why do I do that? I don't want our dog smelling the ground, picking up stuff off the ground, because it can lead to a very dangerous enterprise. If you go on my Facebook page, uh, go back a little ways, you'll see some uh, x-rays 
of Roxton, one of my clients, Penny, I believe was her name, uh, client's stomach, okay? That cost a lot of money, could have been very dangerous. She did well with it, but still, it's something we don't want. So as I say that, I like to use treats if it motivates a dog. I don't throw treats on the ground unless there's a specific purpose for it. 99% of the time, it's always coming out of my hand. If I drop the treat, I'm gonna pick it up and not allow my dog to get it. All right, so you ready? Let's go. Back what? Atta boy. Good boy. So you saw the hand signal from the side, okay? So we're gonna come sit. Atta boy, good boy. I can move around, he has to hold it. Now, down. You notice he started down uh, before I, uh... good boy, I was waiting to see what he was gonna do. He started to down because he saw my hand signal. Very good, sit. Good boy. Again, notice my tone. Break. If he did not down for me either one of those times, I would pretend like this is his head, I would have tapped him towards the ground. I would have said, you know, and then repeat the command and then praise, okay? Remember, if a dog does something once, they're going to do it over and over again. If it's something you like, put a word to it. You've got a new command or a trick. If it's something you don't like, you need to be prepared to fix it. And the beautiful thing is because they're going to do it over and over again, you can get out in front of it the next time that behavior starts to happen. Let's go. Next command is the place. Good boy. Again, hand signals he's got. On the bed, I don't care if he smells it. He can lay down, sit down, stand up. I don't care what he does as long as he stays on the bed. I'll give him one of my elk antlers. He loves it. Loves it completely. And that'll, that'll keep him occupied for 20, 30 minutes or so. But I've kept him in the place for two or three hours. In fact, in the evenings when I'm relaxing, I'll have my clients' dogs out and they're relaxing with me in a down, uh, being free, or in the place command with my other dogs and with my other training clients' dogs. And they learn how to get along that way. Good boy. So again, he can do this for a long time. I point towards the bed. I tell him place, when his fourth foot hits the bed, his last foot hits the bed, I tell him, good boy. I love to give my no or my good boy in the moment, it's so important. If he came off of the bed or if he didn't go to the bed, I would tap the leash a lot like the let's go, parallel to the ground, back towards the center of the bed. Right, let's go. Good boy. Down. Good. Another thing I did there is I didn't ask him to see it. He can down when he's standing up. He can do any command from one command to the other. We just know before we tell him what to do, what our action is going to be is if he does it or if he doesn't do it. Right, let's go. Another command that uh, I use in my videos is load up. Our owner asked for him to be able to climb so we could do climb or load up. I use the point again. <sighs> Atta boy. Quit the smelling. No. Good boy. Break. Good boy. Right here. Atta boy. Good boy. Break. So you see, he's got that hunting line. He can get distracted by smells. It rained. So uh, it's not raining now, but it rained. There's a lot of smells that come to the surface of the ground that gets his attention. That's no excuse. He still has to obey. But he is a dog. He does have instincts. We don't want to remove those instincts. We just want to control them when we're working. He has to first pay attention to us. All right, right here, sit. Good boy. Another thing when we've got a dog that's very hyperactive and ready to go, I like to pause in between commands sometimes. Why? It teaches him patience. So this guy was a guy, when we first had him do a command, he was ready to move on. But now he's learning to be patient. This command is gonna be the C-O-M-E command. I can use a treat if I want. Come. He comes, he sits, and a boy, break. And I'll pet him in love. The hand signal was just like this. We're gonna try it again. Down. Good boy. Walk around, come. Good boy. So now, I may even give him a little reward for that. Good boy, break. Did you notice how I gave him the treat? First of all, I was not luring him with the treat, okay? I don't mind luring a dog with the treat to teach him, 
But once they've learned, the tree comes as a tip. As if I was a waiter or a waitress, or he was a waiter or a waitress, and he obeyed for me, that's a sign of a tip, a commission or a bonus for a job well done, okay? I'll especially use treats learning new commands because I want to when a dog obeys, and I actually also will use it off-leash. And how is off-leash? For example, it's a little bit different. When I'm on leash and I ask a dog to come, they're to come right to me and sit when I'm, and hold that sit until I release them. When I'm off leash, I want them to come to me. I'm gonna give them a target right here, just as I would on leash. But I really, it's up to you if you want them to, to sit or just come to you. The biggest thing we want them to do is when they're off leash is to come to us, okay? That's the biggest thing I have from clients all the time. Their dog doesn't come. Why? Most of the time it happens because when the dog does come, that uh, there's a negative associated with it. We may punish them, we may put them up. The come command, when we have our dog come, must be for that reason only. And we love them, we praise them, and we go from there. How to start that off leash is if I can do it, let's pretend like he's off leash. I've got a treat in my hand, and I would go, well, he's watching me, I'm sorry. Bo, hey, come. Good boy, so he decided to sit. Good boy, break. He sits with me, because that's how I've taught him. But I don't know if you noticed, I said, hey, Bo, I have a treat, a toy, something like that, if that motivates your dog. And I don't say come until he's committed to coming to me. Why? Because when he's committed to coming to me, he's made the decision to come. Hopefully he's in a happy frame of mind. He saw the treat, he saw me, he saw the toy. And then as he commits to coming to me, I'm going to tell him to come. So I'm making a connector, a subliminal connector, that uh, come is a happy thing. Just like he's in a command right now. Let's just say, sit, break. When I break, you notice how I stepped away just then? I like to step away for the same reason as for the come command. He naturally wants to come, and when he does, I pet him and love him, and we're teaching him that happiness, the best thing that can happen in his life is to come to us, okay? Good boy, let's go. So uh, we've done all the obedience but the heel command. We're going to do that next. Good boy. He's not in a command now. For example, he sat beside me. He is not rigid in that command. If he got up, I would do nothing about it, all right? I'm happy with it. If I told him to sit, he would have to hold it. If you listened to my video a few minutes ago, I wouldn't keep him in a sit for a long time, so I would probably go, break. And then if he wanted to continue to sit, he could do it. So now the heel command is we have a box right beside us, okay, a rectangular box. Our job, the heel command, is for when we're moving, he stays in that box beside us. Great for traffic, uh, great for when people are coming back and forth, dogs coming back and forth, we want him to know he's to be right there. Our job is for to keep him in that box. His job is to stay in that box. It's a lot like with the place or anything else. If he starts to go out of the box, we're gonna tap him, we're gonna tell him no, and then heel when he's back in the box. The other thing about the heel command is when we stop, He's to sit automatically. In the beginning, I'll do straight paths. Why? Because I'm just trying to teach my dog to stay beside me, okay? Once he starts to learn, then I'll start making turns. The big thing about a turn is when I make it, I'm always gonna give him a chance to catch up and get back into the box. He can't read our mind. He has to see what we're doing and adapt to it. So when I make a turn here in just a minute, Realize I'm going to allow him to catch up, see what's going on, and get beside me before I stop, okay? Hand signal is like this, heel. We'll take a few steps. We stop, at a boy. Now he's in that sit. Now you notice my hand here, if he started to get up, I would have tapped it. He's in that sit, because he sits at the end of the heel command. If he did not sit when we stopped, it would have been no sit. Now watch my hand, heel. Right back. Now I'm going to step off to the side. See how he's coming right back into the box? Oh, no. Come on. Right back into the box here. Good. We're going to do it again. Heel. Step off. That a boy. Good boy. Again, heel. This time I'm going to turn completely. He's coming back around. And I'm not going to stop until we get back on the straight path. Good boy. And he's holding it as we ask. Great. Good 
Good boy. Yes, sir. I'm proud of you. He's really, really a good boy. He made a little mistake there. Guess what? He's going to make a mistake. You're going to make a mistake. I'm going to make a mistake. As far as I'm concerned, there's only been one perfect being ever walk on this earth. It is not us. So we make mistakes, but the beautiful thing about mistakes is we try to learn from them. And if it's an egregious mistake, we try to make sure the next time and the next time and the next time we're trying to fix it. If you need me, you pick up the phone and call me, 336-945-3232. If uh, Facebook, Jim Hodges Dog Training, my website, jimhodgesdogtraining.com. The last thing I wanted to mention, because I just about forgot it, this is all unscripted, believe it or not, I've just done a ton of these over the years, is the stay command. The stay command is something we can do in a down, down, stay, open palm, stay command. Now he's in that stay and he has to stay there. My rule of thumb is he's got to stay in the stay for at least two minutes, okay? So in the, and he can smell the ground, he can roll over on the side, he can have a chew toy, he can do anything like that as long as he's right there, okay? So he's sort of turned off, he doesn't have to pay attention to me. I will put a dog, especially in the beginning, in a down stay about every day uh, and build up to 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time. He's done it for an hour, okay? The purpose of that is to establish that we're in control, we're the leader, and it also can be a great tool for when you've got company or other people around or something like that, you can put him in a down. You could even put him in a place if you wanted to. The other thing that happens out of this, and this is a another request from the owner is Bo like to dart out the doors. Well, in our life and with every dog we deal with, my dogs and my clients' dogs, when we go to enter or exit a door, our dog has to sit and hold it. With my clients, I tell them they have to sit, hold it, wait, something along those lines, okay? And they don't get to move forward, even though we may move through the door, they have to hold that sit until we release them. We release them or we say, let's go that starts to teach a dog not to bolt out the door. Well, another thing that I'll do sometimes is once he's got that down and he understands we're sitting, entering and exiting all doors, the next thing I may do is take the leash, drop it out on the ground, and I gave instructions in the booklet on this, and I would say, stay, he's in to stay, and I may open the door. Heck, I may open the door and prop it open. I'm gonna make sure that I can get my hand or my foot on this leash and I might have someone else walk out the door and start talking to me or throwing a ball or something. If he starts to bolt out the door, what am I gonna do? Tap the leash. No, 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 no. Get him back in, stay, and immediately carry on. This is how you start to teach him not to bolt out the door. We have to set him up. We have to praise him when he holds it. Once we start getting him to stop bolting out the door, we can do it in rooms as well. Didn't mean to add that on, but it was something that I had neglected. Thank you so much. God bless. If I can help, let me know. Take care. Bye-bye.